Welcome to the 2021 On-Farm Network results series. I'm Megan Burns, agronomist for the On-Farm Network program. Let's discuss our soybean seeding rate trial results from this growing season. So we've been conducting uh, seeding rate trials in soybeans for a long time now with a total of 100 trials testing a whole bunch of different seeding rate combinations. Now, the main purpose of these trials is obviously to assess the effect of seeding rate on yield, and we've tested a range of seeding rate combinations depending on what each farmer who hosts these trials is interested in. Um, but the minimum requirement is a difference of around 30,000 seeds an acre between our seeding rate treatments at each of these trials. So we want to make sure that our treatments are different enough from one another, that we're establishing different enough plant stands um, to have the potential for agronomic uh, performance and yield differences. So this season we had a total of 14 seeding rate trials and across those trials we tested a range of seeding rates between 100,000 and 252,000 seeds per acre. So kind of covering both ends of the spectrum from quite low to quite high um, and, and everything in between. So as we go through the results, we'll take a look at the different combinations that were tested within each trial. Now I'm gonna spoil the fun here and give you a heads up that I'm going to cruise through these individual trial results pretty quickly um, because there was no significant yield differences for any seeding rate combination that we investigated this season. So I'm going to point out a few key things from each trial as we move through, and please obviously feel free to pause the video at any point and have a closer look at the yield graphs or the economics tables or the seeding rate uh, or plant stands tables um, uh, as it suits your fancy, um, but I'm going to cruise through these pretty quickly, um, but hang around because we'll look at all 100 soybean seeding rate trials across the network towards the end of the video to see how things are stacking up um, as we have uh, 100 of these trials and, and 10 years of this research now. So this is always a popular question, as you can probably imagine, uh, with the size of the data set and the fact that we had just 14 of these in, uh, in 2021 alone. So it's a question that uh, seems to be on, on the top of producers' minds quite frequently, which makes sense with the cost of soybean seed. So it's something we look forward to continuing to investigate um, moving forward as farmers continue to be interested in this question. Okay, so launching right into our yield results, our, our first trial was looking at a pretty classic comparison of 130, 160, and 190,000 seeds per acre. Um, you'll notice that we saw pretty low plant stands overall, and this is going to be a theme. Plant stands were quite low in 2021, um, and the drought probably had um, something to do with that, as you could imagine. Uh, so that'll be something that you'll see pretty consistently throughout uh, the next 14 trials worth of results. And like I said, no significant yield difference. Now, when you see no significant yield difference, you're also going to see an associated decrease in profit per acre, um, which is equivalent to the increased seed cost at those higher seeding rates. So we're obviously not seeing any return on that investment in input um, or increased input cost um, at those higher seeding rates if we're not getting a, a significant yield difference. Um, so that's why it's, it's presented that way and that'll be consistent throughout the presentation. So our next trial uh, was the one that looked at the lowest seeding rate we had this year, which was 100,000 seeds an acre, and it was comparing that to 130 and 160,000 seeds per acre rates. So we observed actually pretty notable differences in plant architecture, which was very interesting. So uh, at our lowest plant stand, or our lowest seeding rate, sorry, um, we had uh, much more branched plants and much thicker stemmed plants compared to the highest seeding rate at this trial, um, which makes sense, right? As, as you reduce your seeding rate, uh, in theory, there should be more space for each plant within the row. Fewer plants in the row, they have more space to take up and grow. So it was interesting to see that play out at this trial. Um, we had really low plant stands overall here. Um, uh, like I said, that's gonna be a theme as well. And then of course, uh, like I spoiled the fun for, we had no significant yield difference here and we see our associated decrease in profit per acre um, with those higher seeding rates then. Um, it was interesting though to see that there wasn't a significant yield difference here uh, given how different those plants looked um, when we took our observations uh, at the late season plant count timing there. Okay, so moving on to another trial that was comparing 120, 150 and 180,000 seeds per acre rates. Um, this site actually suffered a killing frost pretty early in the season. So some of the seedlings were out of the ground, but not all of them had emerged yet. And we were looking at anywhere between 27 and 46,000 dead seedlings per acre. Um, this site had really low plant stands and that definitely would have factored into that. Um, but we still didn't have any significant uh, yield difference here between our seeding rates. So another trial that also looked at the same seeding rates as that last one, um, again, seeing lower than targeted stands by the end of the season, um, a reduction in stands as the season progressed, probably related to the dry conditions. And again, no significant yield differences between these seeding rates. 
So the next trial looked at slightly different seeding rates, looking at 140 to 200,000 seeds per acre. Um, this actually might be a case where you're telling your seeder to put out one thing and it's doing something else, putting out uh, slightly more seed than, uh, than what you asked it for. Um, you'll see that by R8 here, our plant stands uh, were all actually higher than our targeted seeding rates. Um, so two things to note, that's, that's not necessarily a, a very uncommon thing. Um, uh, it's just a calibration thing with the seeder. And that's fine. We still have a really good difference in plant stand between our, our seeding rate treatments here, even if the seeding rates didn't, didn't put out exactly what we asked them to. Um, and something else you'll notice is that by R8, uh, we came back with higher plant stands per acre than what we did at B2. Something else that we saw this year, in addition to generally lower than targeted stands, which isn't the case here, um, but something else we saw pretty consistently was some delayed emergence. And I think that had to do a lot with the dry conditions and, and variable moisture conditions within a field um, in the springtime. So, so this isn't uncommon uh, in this season with what we saw that we'd have some late emergence that we missed in our early season plant count, depending how early we were there. Um, but still, we had no significant difference in yield uh, across those seeding rates at this trial. So the next site was another one that's on the lower end of our, our scale of comparison, looking at rates starting at 108,000 seeds an acre. And this was another trial where we saw those, uh, those differences in plant architecture. So it's a little bit less obvious here, um, but down at this lower seeding rate, uh, you can see there's more branching going on compared to at the, the highest seeding rate for this site. Again, we're seeing low plant stands, reduced plant stands by the end of the season, and that probably had to do with the dry conditions. And again, no significant yield difference here, and we see the associated decrease in profit per acre um, with those higher seed costs as a result. So the next site was another classic 130, 160, 190 comparison, and we had pretty good stands um, throughout the season here, reduced a little bit by the end of the season again, um, and no significant yield difference. These yields were, were pretty similar across those three treatments. So another lower comparison at this site, starting at just 115,000 seeds an acre. Um, again, we see some reduced stands by, uh, by what should say R6 here, um, but, but pretty good, looking good in terms of differences between the plant stands uh, for the different seeding rate treatments. And again, we see no significant difference in yield, even though we have that difference in plant stand. Okay, next site, comparing 122 to 180,000 seeding rates. Um, we have good stands here, so pretty close to what we were targeting, uh, or maybe closer than some of the other trials um, this season. But again, no significant yield differences here. Um, something to note at this site, there was actually quite uh, high weed pressure, um, certainly later in the season. Um, we were a little bit surprised actually at the yields that came back, given what the weed pressure uh, looked like. So just something to keep in mind um, for interpreting this, uh, this site overall. But again, there was no significant yield response there. So um, adding another 120, 150, and 180,000 seeds per acre comparison, uh, again, seeing some reduced stands here later in the season, um, probably due to dry conditions, and again, no yield difference. Catching on to the pattern yet, we've got lower plant stands than we were targeting uh, with the dry conditions, and we've got uh, a very stark lack of yield response um, this season. So looking at the last few trials here, uh, this next one compared 125 to 185,000 seeds per acre uh, uh, seeding rates with 155,000 in the middle there. Um, it had pretty low stands, again, relative to what we were targeting and again, no significant yield response at this site. And the next trial, very same story here, uh, comparing the same, um, the same seeding rates and, uh, and no significant yield response. And then we had another 130, 160, 190 comparison, again, with no uh, yield difference and um, uh, a decrease in profit per acre associated with that increased seed cost as a result. And finally, this is the last one um, of the 2021 season. This one actually looked at our highest seeding rate of, of 252,000 seeds per acre. This was a conventional soybean variety. Um, a couple things to note here. So the plant stands are, are quite low relative to the seeding rates. Um, it had really low germs, so less than 70%. Um, and there was also really high weed pressure here throughout the whole season. So that could have played into those low plant stands as well. But again, we aren't seeing a significant difference in yield. Um, obviously with those higher, uh, higher seeding rates, we're seeing you know, more of a decrease or more of a hit to the bottom line um, when we don't have that associated improvement in yield with those higher rates. 
Okay, so getting to the more exciting part, um, you get the idea. Investigation of the whole wide range of seeding rates from 100,000 to 252,000 seeds per acre, but very minimal things in the way of notable differences and no yield response this year. Well, if we look at how this stacks up to our sort of across the network results over the last 10 years and now 100 soybean seeding rate trials, um, we'll see that we've only had a total of 18 significant responses across all 100 trials. And only six times out of those 18 were those responses economic, where we had enough of a yield increase with that increased uh, seeding rate um, to offset or at least offset the cost of that, that seed in the spring. So looking at that using this handy pie chart here, it's pretty easy to visualize when you only have 100 trials, but it works out to about 80% of the time um, we're not seeing soybean seeding rate make a significant difference in terms of soybean yield. And obviously that can have big implications for the bottom line, right, with the price of soybean seed. So most often seeding rate is not making a difference in terms of yield. If we look at some key takeaway messages from the 100 trials where we look at you know, where we do have response, where we don't have response. We've put all of that together into some key takeaway messages here. So this is where things are sitting so far, but it's important to note that this data um, set will continue to grow and shift as we continue to have growers interested in uh, these trials. And I should mention that um, it's only in the last couple of seasons that we've really started to fill out the lower sort of range or spectrum in our seeding rate comparisons. So it would be interesting and, and beneficial for these key takeaway messages if we can further refine them by um, continuing to fill out that, that lower spectrum of the seeding rate comparisons um, under different growing season conditions and on more farms in more years. So this is something that we'll look to continue forward with. But right now, it looks like if you're somewhere in the neighborhood of kind of 150,000 to 180,000 seeds per acre, our data is telling us that you shouldn't be leaving yield behind in, in the vast, vast majority of cases um, if you're somewhere in that, in that neighborhood. But like I said, these key messages will continue to grow and shift and change as our data set does and our understanding does. Um, so we'll continue to investigate this with uh, interested farmers moving forward. So like I said, uh, we're gonna continue doing this um, with those who are interested and uh, take a look at the factors involved in seeding rate decisions, um, maybe investigate seed survivability a little bit more, um, how that may be playing into the plant stands that we get and, and our uh, yield response or lack thereof, um, continue to evaluate conditions and rates that lead to significant yield differences as we continue to expand this data set. Um, and then we can also look at things like the relative cost of you know, the insurance of keeping our seeding rates a little bit higher. If we're not seeing a very frequent benefit to that um, insurance application of, of a little bit higher seeding rates or however you wanna word that or look at it, um, you know, how does that play out in terms of profit per acre um, over time, not just in one, one growing season? So those are some of the ideas we have um, moving forward for soybean seeding rates as we continue to grow this data set. So a big thank you to all of our on-farm network participants. If you're interested in learning more, getting involved, or have a trial idea, please feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you.